Jim Delfino. Hi, welcome. Uh, so you're here in the fall. Uh, we've already harvested all the grapes. Um, I did pick a few just for fun um, that we're, um, we, we're, we have some grapes that we've devoted to a climate study. Uh, and that's just one of the rows in the vineyard that has maybe nine or 10 different varietals in it that uh, we, we look at how they ripen compared to other parts of uh, Uncle Valley and the rest of Southern Oregon, Medford, and et cetera. So, um, so this is, the vineyard is dead, or not dead, it's, it's going to sleep now. That's why it's changing color. There's no grapes as you can see. Um, but if they were, they would, there would be bunches like this on there. Um, that's for you. Oh, thank you. So this is Grenache grape, but you, if, I don't know if you've had, uh, you know, grocery store grapes are much um, bigger. Right, the ones you taste, see how small they are in diameter? Uh, they're round instead, and they have seeds in them. So these are not uh, fun to eat necessarily, but they're pretty delicious usually. They do taste and, very good. And although these these never did get 100% ripe either. Oh so. really? <laughs> it tastes pretty good to me. But this is what we would pick into. We would be picking with a scissors like this, uh, where we just clip them off of the plant and put them in a bucket. And when the bucket's full, we put it into a bigger bin, which we'll see when we go up to the winery. Um, what that looks like. Um, so we, we pick the grapes and we sell some of them so to other wineries. So uh, we have a lot of harvest bins. Those go on a trailer when we're as we're picking. We put the harvest bins on the trailer. When it's full, we take it to wherever uh, we've uh, sold those grapes to. Or if we're making wine, uh, we we take that and it go to, gets processed through our equipment to uh, turn it into juice and then. Uh, and then the wine is fermented uh, where the sugar is converted from sugar to alcohol. Um, so we'll, some of that's happening right now. And actually we're doing a port style wine this year in the winery, which means you, uh, if you study algebra, here's where your algebra really comes in because <laughs> right. you're, um, uh, the, the amount of alcohol, we add alcohol to, to make a port wine, we add alcohol uh, from a really high proof brandy uh, and that, stops the fermentation and uh, leaves behind the sugar that we didn't change with the yeast uh, and and so there's some sweetness but also a little bit higher alcohol uh, level and so um, port is usually around 19 or 20 percent alcohol wines are usually about 13 or 14 percent alcohol red wines um, so you have to be able to know how much alcohol to add to the fermentation so that you get to that 20% without going too much over or not being too short. Okay. And that's a uh, formula. Right. You know, A plus B plus times whatever, the, all the uh, percentages. So it can be fun uh, and you can make mistakes. I've done, made a few mistakes, but not, <laughs> not too many. Anyway, if you want to, we'll walk up there. Absolutely. Does that sound okay? Sounds great. Thank you. I'm going to get a picture of the We're at, the, we're at the, the garage door or the main door to our winery. And uh, as, as you can see, this, there's a lot of already made wine. It's all stored here. So we, we, uh, we make it here and we also make it in other wineries where they have um, uh, equipment that we don't have in our uh, inventory yet, let's say. Uh, so uh, that would be kind of an interesting thing that the, the way the machinery takes the stems, the grape off the stems. Mm -hmm. but. Um, that's essentially we take this grape, we put it in a piece of equipment that tumbles it, and the grapes come out one end and the stems go out another end. But before we get there, when we're harvesting, before we decide to harvest, we, we have to take some of the grapes and we use a, a device called a refractometer. Uh, there are various kinds. This one is a digital refractometer, which makes it easy for people with lousy eyes to be able to see. And uh, what we would typically do is take you know that we had a bucket of grapes or we had a bunch of grapes and we would squash all those and then that would give us a kind of an average for the vineyard mm -hmm. but you can also just take a grape and squeeze some of the juice out and we get a couple of grapes we get enough juice on the refractometer we'll push this button I don't know if you can see it let's see it's gonna look at it for a little bit oh it's 23 sorry I said 20 huh <laughs> it's 23.2 bricks that's a sort of a percentage of how much sugar is in the grape so we're looking for 24 or 25% sugar, and then we'll end up with a, that converts to 
about 60% of that, so the number. So you start with 25% sugar, sugar, you'll end up with about 135 or 14% alcohol in the wine and no sugar left. Wow. The, we add yeast and the yeast, like just like d bread, mm -hmm. uh, except it's a, a different kind of yeast, but it's essentially the same thing. And you're, um, that consumes yeah. the sugar. They, okay. Well, there's two, there's, you can do, use a refractometer uh, almost at this time, stage mm -hmm. uh, where you're just looking at the juice the refractometer is so simple, you know, but you can also use um, uh, a hydrometer, which is a, a weighted floating uh, 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 thermometer type thing, okay. and you float it in the wine, and it will, um, it can, it floats at whatever level of sugar that's in there, and then you can read it where it's, where the, wherever the wine is touching the, the uh, thing, there'll be numbers graduated, and that'll tell you how much sugar is in there also. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a specific gravity thing, which you can look that up. <laughs> gravity and mass, two, two yeah. important pieces. Yeah. So, um, and then we were talking, uh, we were talking earlier. That, so, um, this is a heater. So, besides uh, the yeast, also kind of needs to stay warm. It gives off a lot of heat while it's making wine. But um, so this this is probably be a, even though it's sixty degrees in the winery, the wine it's about seventy one right now. Uh, what we just I just measured it this morning. So. Um, we measure it and punch it down. We push the top, you'll see when we take the plastic off, we push the, the grapes down back into the juice uh, regularly. It's called punch down. And in this case, we also have a little heater to keep it sort of help the yeast stay warm. Okay. Uh, we don't want them to get too hot. If they get uh, like above I high 80s into 90 degrees, it changes the wine, it turns it into like cooked stuff. Oh. Uh, so we want it when too low, we're doing in the 70s, the lower the, lower the temperature, the more fruit flavor you'll get out of the wine. So we're sort of um, want to be in the middle someplace. Okay. So you learned a lot of this from going to school up at UCC. Am I correct to say that? Uh, I didn't go to school at UCC, okay. but I did. Um, uh, we have a, uh, Oregon has a symposium every February where uh, up in now they do it in Portland, and um, they that's where they that's where we learned a lot. They, every it's like a three day thing where you can do viticulture. You can learn about viticulture, and they get experts from all over the world. So you're there. It's like going to class, sort like of. A like a conference. Yeah. Okay. I want to jump in there and help you. <laughs> so we can go wow. close. Oh my goodness. You can't hear it. Okay, so it looks like it's all grapes, right? But really, it's a uh, stick. This is not um, high tech, low tech. <laughs> um, so this is what's happening here. Is the grapes are floating on top of the wine, and they're and they're being pushed up by the the yeast consumes the sugar and turns. The, that sugar into sugar is a carbon molecule, mm -hmm. so is alcohol. So it's taking some of the, it's taking carbon dioxide out of the the carbon molecule and turn and so it changes it slightly. Uh, it's still carbon, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but they take some of that CO2 out, and that's what pushes the bubbles up. And it's also what let's see if we can put the hands on. Let's see if this is going to work or not. It's getting close to being done. So one of the, one of the tests. This is low tech also. One of the tests is if the match goes out as you put it down, since this one's still pretty lit. So we're almost done. Uh, it's not producing enough carbon dioxide to put the match out. Interesting. So there's, hmm. Also, I just stirred it up and, and we got the fan going so you could blow it off. But um, so if we, what, what, when you're making wine, you're, it's, this is called punching down. So we're going to put, we push the, the, the juice, the, the wine grapes back into the, they're floating up because of the carbon dioxide that's pushing it up. And you can see, let's see if you can see the, it's foamy. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we go through the whole, the whole batch. This is a really small batch. This is about 130 gallons. Normally we would have something maybe four feet, this bin would be four feet tall. Or even bigger. Some of the bigger wineries have it in big tanks, thousands of gallons. So this would produce how many bottles? So 130 gallons is probably. This is about. 
uh, 50 cases of oh, wine. Wow. So, so what is that? Uh, math people. Math That's like maybe yeah. uh, 600 cases, 600 bottles, 600 bottles of wine. So if kids wanted to get in this field, a science degree? Yeah, chemistry is a big deal mm -hmm. because this is there's a lot of chemistry involved in you know, molecules, carbon dioxide and your, your, the yeast and some of it's like cooking almost. Right. Um, also, uh, math. math. Of course, math and science kind of go together. So, uh, as I was mentioning before, if we wanted to, this, we haven't put the alcohol in it yet. I mean, the extra alcohol. It's making alcohol right now. And um, so this would actually taste like wine right now because it's pretty close to being done. Can you add um, extra? We would, we're, to make it into a port, we'll add, um, maybe 30 gallons of, of high proof brandy to this. Wow. And then that will that will end the fermentation because the yeast will die in that kind of alcohol. Hmm. But you, to know how much alcohol you add, you, there's that formula. Right. So you're, you, we would measure how much sugar is left in here or how much alcohol already is in here. And then we would have to determine how much brandy to add to get to, this might be right now, might be 10% 10, 10 alcohol right now. So mm -hmm. almost done. Um, and we're, we wanted to get to, if we wanted to get to 20% 20, 20 alcohol, we don't just add 10% brandy because the brandy is is already 80% alcohol. So we, so we have, there's a formula obviously, right. right? There's 130 gallons at 10%. How much brandy at 80% do we add to get to 20% for the whole thing? Right. Uh, so there's a formula for that, and um, okay, uh, and and that's there's, there goes your chemistry and your and your algebra. There's ways of cheating too, but I won't tell you those. <laughs> We're not going to tell kids that. <laughs> so, there's, there's there's websites where you just put the numbers in and out it comes. Sure. So, we don't. Okay, don't listen to that, right? No. <laughs> yeah, because it's it. Now you're relying on someone else mm -hmm. to tell you what to do. And right. if it's wrong, they, they don't get in trouble, right? Right. Exactly. So you need to know the formula so that you can check back. Uh, I don't like relying on where you, it's okay, you know, like how many gallons is in a liter or those kind of things. There's all those things on the, on the internet now that you can take advantage of. Sure. Um, sure. And so, so you can do that, but it's nice to be able to know the formula so that you can say, well, if I do it with the formula and they tell me it's 30 gallons and the formula says 30 gallons, I'm happy. Right? Mm -hmm. The formula says 25 and they say 35, something's not right. So mm -hmm. I double check and make sure that, that you're, you're doing the right thing. Otherwise you can end up ruining the whole batch, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, we were talking, I was talking with Jim earlier and we were talking about how he acquired this field of, <laughs> of we thought was gonna be a hobby, but oh. is not. <laughs> and he, he and his wife had shared they moved from um, yeah, Francisco up here and he knew nothing of it. They were looking for a small place to be with some land and to produce the land into this beautiful vineyard yeah. and winery. Yeah. Yeah, so well, you had to educate yourself on all yeah. this. And so we're, and actually, and besides this, the, the symposium, because mm -hmm. when we started doing this, it was, it was 2000 uh, when we came here. And so uh, they had the symposium, but we didn't have the program at the college. Now they have a program the, at, at UCC where you can get a, a a one-year degree in viticulture and, and a certificate, which um, you, you're you're able to go work. You would uh, someone had to hire you in a in a vineyard would know that you have some basic knowledge about what goes on in a, in in a, a vineyard. Year yeah, in the okay. one year viticulture, mm -hmm. and then the second year is uh, winemaking, uh, and so you're uh, and that's to get your I guess it's an AA degree or an AS mm -hmm. degree. I'm not sure how they. I think it's AS because it's because of the science. Right. Um, anyway, so and uh, most of that is transferable, but not all of it. I don't think. To if you wanted to go four years, uh, you could start at UCC and then take some of those classes with you to uh, OSU, let's say, and do a four-year degree in um, biology or in chemistry. I don't know. Which I think they have viticulture program oh, at, uh, at, at, at OSU. OSU. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yes, you could if you because you have to have chemistry, which is basic stuff, right? right? Uh, and, and the math and the chemistry and uh, the other classes that you would take normally for a, uh, an associate's degree, you know, English and uh, history and whatever, all those uh, lower division classes transfer. Uh, and then if you said, gee, I want rather 
be a doctor or uh, something else. You have a lot of basics. Right. Right. You'd have a bunch of stuff like soils and bugs and things, which, which may not transfer for a doctor, <laughs> but uh, it still would be some general knowledge which would be helpful you right. know, in your garden. And in the, in the, during the season, when you're harvesting grapes, do you hire a lot of people? Yeah, so, so grapes, so um, the vineyard, so the during crush, this is when you're making wine, then we call that the crush because you're basically crushing grapes. So when you're, cru it's it's frantic. In other words, we're harvesting and processing grapes, and so there's long days. Um, so there's lots of uh, extra work during that period of time at every winery. You know, they just need people to, you know, just do physical labor, uh, and it could be anything between doing punch downs because if you have that was easy, but you can imagine if you have 30 of those, right. and if they're really full, they're much harder to punch down. Um, so there's a lot of that going on, so you, you, know, you build up your muscles, I guess. <laughs> um, but yes, so and during harvest, we hire uh, up to 10 people a day during the harvest season, and it, that requires sort of no experience. Okay. Uh, we have a little training time, you know, so for safety, so you don't cut yourself or, or uh, hurt somebody you're working with. But, uh, and then for our vineyard, which is only 18 acres of grapes, um, we, we have to have, that 10 people would take seven days to harvest the whole, if we did it every day okay. for uh, like, a, let's say, a, was, uh, we would work seven to 11 or noon. So five or six hours, something like that, depending on the, how, how well the pick went. Uh, right, or how day. well the grapes all ripened at the same time yeah well no so so yeah so we wouldn't do it every day obviously right. so, so uh like these grapes are just ripe now right okay. they're 23.7 right. so we wanted to get a little higher than that however um they're still viable they're still nice you can see they look really good we could still pick those and make if we had a lot of them they're just a few plants out there mm -hmm. in this uh, for the study row but if we had uh, let's say an acre of that stuff we could be picking that right now and making one okay. so there's some that uh, whereas other thing else we picked the end of September and uh, the first week of October, we were all done. We were, so we're also uh, guided by weather. So it, uh, if it's gonna be a lot of rain and a lot of cold weather after, it's the grapes you might as well start harvesting because you're not gonna get any more ripeness necessarily. There's the, also the leaves start, those red leaves, they don't make any more sugar. So we need the green leaves to make sugar, mm -hmm. the photosynthesis the process of uh, uh, using the carbon dioxide in the air that we exhale and the sunlight and water and turns it into sugar goes in the grape you have to have green leaves for that so once they turn red this fall you're not going to get any more sugar and so you might as well pick the grapes you know so uh, and then it's just a matter of getting it done before winter you know or, it's not winter yet, but we look at it as winter, you know, because it's uh, we're not going to get any more sunlight, not enough to make the grapes ripen. Good but that we could pick and make it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good information. We need to know that. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Is there any more you'd like to share with us about this wonderful process and how? So we yeah, the uh, the other thing about um, well, when you're working for somebody, you're doing what they're asking you to do. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people get get into this and do their own thing. Um, and one of the most, one of the fun things about being uh, being your own boss, let's say, uh, and even having, let's say, not quite a really huge budget, you have to figure things out uh, and make them work. So you're inventing things. You you have the the ability to be inventive uh, uh, and s little things. You know, it might Creative. be yeah, it might be that uh, on the tractor I had a problem. I had I needed fenders, so I just ended up with two um, like fiberglass antennas that push the leaves up off the ground so I wouldn't run, drive on them with the, tr with the wheels. Right. Uh, stuff like that, right? Or something breaks and you have to do whatever. Right. Um, uh, it, make it work. So uh, that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, I think uh, then beyond the making the, growing the grapes and making the wine, then you have to sell it. And so that's what we're talking about having, um, we have a tasting room where people can taste the wine and and buy it and we also so that's an employment opportunity you know for people to, to work in the tasting room uh, and here we have uh, music events so uh, during the summer so there's we put extra staff on for those music events um, and they don't all have to be uh, wine uh, pourers necessarily so you have to be 21 to pour wine 
right. but you but uh, at a, an event like that uh, we have uh, other things that are happening you know that uh, what require staff parking people and things like that okay. uh, food yeah. and those well types so of food things. that's another right that's yeah. another thing we don't we're not involved in that because that's a you there are some people that have commercial kitchen you have to have a commercial kitchen uh, to have food and then uh, so and we don't have that so what we end up for food we just have a food truck come okay. and then they are licensed for that that's a whole other licensing thing well, that's good information yeah that's really good to know okay so I think we couldn't, we're going to wrap it up. Okay. I appreciate your time. Yeah. If there's any questions, don't worry. <laughs> we're all done. To know. Thank you for allowing us to come out during this COVID time and this craziness. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate that. And yeah, we'll be happy to see you on our the Great Hippo Facebook page. Yeah, I hope that works out good. It will. Yeah. Thank you again. All right. You're all right. welcome. I want to shake your hand. Ah. <laughs> Thanks.